Hey there, it's that time again. It's Power Pearls Unplugged time, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the show, of the video show, I guess you could say. My name is Kara Gott Warner, and I inspire knitters and crocheters and newbie craftpreneurs to go down that yarn crafting path and to live a holistically integrated life so they can have time for their creativity. So today I have a really interesting topic and I actually teased things a little bit and talked about them on my personal profile page just about 10 minutes ago because I thought, ooh, this will be a great way to kind of get all the peeps over there, over here, because a lot of my friends are knitters, crocheters, editors, they work in the publishing industry. And I thought, hey, well, come on, let's just kind of have a party together. So anyway, I, I realized that when I got over on my page, because a few nights ago I was testing my, uh, my internet connection, because as you guys know, if you've been watching, you've noticed that I've had some issues with, with my internet and kind of cutting out. So I moved to a different area and I think this is really good because I got a nice background here and this is one of my favorite spots in my house too. I've got lots of favorite spots. Um, so anyway, I only had my, my personal profile set to uh, myself. <laughs> so I did, and the, but this was kind of cool because I figured out that I could do a video. Now, of course, I just figured this out and many of you probably know this already, but I tape, I can see you can tape a video for yourself and then post it. So if you wanted to talk about something that's very specific and you're not quite ready for the interaction with other people chiming in, it's kind of cool because you can create the video, post it to your page later. So anyway, that's what I ended up doing. And when I tried to share it with you guys over on the Power Pearls page right here, if you're watching, uh, it wouldn't let me. And that's when I realized that my settings were set to myself. So just a little tip there, but you know, if you guys are thinking of treading in, in the uh, going live waters, uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about designing specifically, and I've been wearing my editor's hat. Um, and so I'm going to do that a little bit today, but really not. It's more, you know, what is the inspiration behind a design? doesn't matter who you are. If you're, you know, you're a yarn crafter, you're, you're a creative person. What are those components that go into, into this? And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, so I think this will be a lot of fun. And uh, so while you guys are kind of coming into the room, um, I just want to also share just a little, a little bit about this and why this was, <laughs> who inspired this? Who inspired this? And I'm hoping that she'll, she'll be jumping on today. Hey, Jana, how are you? Um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about uh, the just kind of give you a little more of an intro in just a few moments when people start to come in. So I'll just first say that the one of the listeners who's also a patron of the podcast, um, Melanie Fiedler, and I, I, I always have been meaning to ask Melanie, if you watch now, if you're watching soon, if you're there now, um, I haven't seen you pop up yet, but if you watch later, please correct me if I said your last name wrong. So Judy Fiedler. Hey, Judy, how are you? So nice to see you. Yay, you're live. We're live. We're live. Diane is here from Oregon. You guys are beating me to the, to the punch. Usually I ask you where you're coming, you're viewing from, but this is, this is all good. Um, so Melanie Fiedler, who's a listener and a patron of the podcast, she was the one that came up with this, this topic of today's topic. You know, where does that magic spark come from that moves you from the inspiration to the finished pattern? And I'm going to talk about that because these are, there are four things, four things that kind of create this uh, kind of pro are a part of this, this process. I think part of any design process. Hi, Tammy. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. Um, joining us, I should say. And I'm going to talk about four, four pieces, four components. The spark, right? How do you get the spark? Where does it come from? And number two is the sketch, right? So maybe sketching is not your thing, but there are lots of ways to cheat it. And we'll, you know, we'll talk about that. I have a, a book that I'm going to show you that I talked about 
in my newsletter this morning. So if any of you guys are, are getting my, my weekly newsletter, um, I mentioned that I would be show, doing a little show and tell of this book. That's a, a book that I really love because uh, it was first introduced to me by Stephanie J. Pell. I hope I, I always forget it. I think I'm saying her last name wrong. But um, man, many of you probably know Stephanie, and um, she suggested this particular book in a workshop that I took with her years and years ago. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to what I was saying. So I'm gonna talk about the spark, which leads to the sketch, or maybe the spark and the sketch happen simultaneously, because that really does happen. You guys know that you know all these things, kind of we have our own little process, and maybe one comes before the other. So. Since I'll be talking about these in a certain order, doesn't mean they happen in that order. So the spark, the sketch, number three is the swatch, and then finally the pattern, number four. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. And so again, Melanie, thank you for this suggestion. When Melanie contacted me uh, via email um, a couple days ago, she because she always suggests some really awesome topics, and this was one of them, and so, uh, I was excited. It was one of those things where within seconds, I was like, yes, this is it. You know, snap. When you snap the fingers, you know, yes. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Nice to see you. Linda is from Savannah, Georgia. Uh, Tammy is from Kentucky. Diane from Oregon. Judy. Yay. We already said that. Yay. You're here on time. And of course, Jana from Birmingham, Alabama so far. So you guys, are you ready to dig in? Are you guys ready to dig in to this process? I think this is gonna be a lot of fun today. A little swig of my coffee. This is a funny, funny story. Well, not so funny, but funny to me because my husband has a beard and it's all really, it's, it's gray. It's like he's white, white, and then he has dark and dark like this, and then maybe some white here. So I said, well, maybe you should do use like, you know, what is that called? Uh, just for men and go to work one day and like just freak everybody out. But I just thought I got this for him for Christmas. And he never uses it. So um, I'm using it. And I told him, I said, so I can think of you all day long. Not really, but <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so yes, isn't it cute? I mean, like, you know, the whole mustache craze. I thought, well, it's a beard. The beard is hot now, isn't it? And my husband looks very good with a beard. He looks very good, even though he's really gray, but he looks very distinguished. All right, you guys. So everyone's saying they're ready. So I wanna see some thumbs up, thumbs up. We're ready. We're gonna dig into this and we're gonna start with number one, which is the spark. So like I was saying, where does it come from? Um, you know, for, for many of us, it comes from many different things. For me, I will just start with, it's kind of funny that I'm gonna start with this, but I just, being outside, running, or going to the gym, or walking, you know, walking in nature, because I get really excited. I mean, I get excited about what I'm gonna podcast about, what I'm gonna talk about here in these videos. So the reason why I'm starting with that is because sometimes the spark comes from something very indirect, right? It may not come from where the places that you think that it'll come from, like looking at a knitting magazine, although it does, of course. You know, looking at creative knitting, yes. Uh, but anyway, it, sometimes it doesn't come from that. A lot of the times for me, it comes from listening to other podcasts because, you know, that's kind of what started this whole thing for me in the first place with being a podcaster because I was listening to podcasts and I was so inspired. And, you know, that's kind of where that started and those creative juices came. But Maybe, like I said, so it's a walk in nature. Maybe you see a stunning design in a, in a, in a magazine, uh, you know, a, a fashion magazine, not even a knitting magazine, but a knitting magazine, of course. Ethnic influences, maybe you pulled open your stitch dictionary and you just said, I'm gonna sit here and I'm just gonna start swatching. So of course that leads, that's another phase, but I'm just kind of separating these out one by one. Or maybe you went to a yarn shop and you found an amazing ball of yarn. Uh, and you know, you just started swatching. You just went to town, going crazy with that with that ball, with the ball of yarn, and it inspired new ideas because that happens for me. So, uh, what about you? So, throughout this, I thought it would be fun to keep going back and forth. So, to engage with you, and instead of me always talking, always you know chit chatting, because I love to do that, you guys. What helps you with that first? that first part, the magic spark. 
So jump in now and, you know, in the comments and share the kinds of things that get you excited. That very first phase of knitting a new design, knitting a new pattern, when you find that yarn, like what is it? What is it? Or just something in general, creativity. While I take a sip of my fabulous coffee out of my amazing mug. So go for it, you guys. And so Jana says, browsing Ravelry gives me ideas too. Of course, Ravelry, and I don't mention Ravelry as much as I should, but what a great resource, you guys, isn't it? Because um, you can get some gorgeous, you know, um, you know, yarns that from indie dyers that are making small amounts of yarn that they can't, you know, sell in the yarn shops or in other places, but on Ravelry, it's a playing field, it's a level playing field. And so anyone can get in on the game if they want to do like a, um, a limited edition anything. And same thing with patterns. I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal. The kinds of patterns that show up on Ravelry that just go viral, it blows me away. Okay, so Tammy says, when I find a great yarn and I can't wait to, to, make, to make something pretty. Yay, exactly. Um, that is probably hands down the biggest for me. Um, even though I say, yes, like when I'm exercising, ideas come to me, but when I'm sitting with that, that yarn, that really excites me. I don't know if you guys saw, I don't have it here with me right now, it's upstairs. Uh, Cause of course, as I'm talking, an idea comes to me and I'm like, oh, I wish I had that thing. But on Instagram, I've been posting, uh, I've posted a few times this gorgeous hank of yarn. It was in a cake because I had, you know, put it, uh, wound it into a pull skein and it was espresso, Barocco espresso yarn. Uh, so vibrant, beautiful colors, like this particular colorway. It was amazing. And when I posted it on uh, Instagram, I just got like flooded with, the, with comments about it, asking where to get it. What is this yarn? Uh, but things like that just get you excited, you know, and that's just the darn truth, you guys. Hi, Mary Helen from rainy Toronto. Well, Mary, Hel Mary Helen, it's going to be raining and storming here in Indiana tonight. Right now, it's like 70 degrees. Can you believe the weather? Just a little aside here, but I'm just like floored by the weather. Um, but tonight it's going to be storming here as well. So I guess maybe it's coming from your direction, Mary Helen, here to Indiana. So we'll see. So you guys, uh, if you, uh, I'll just kind of wait another moment or so. Okay, here's Judy. Judy uh, answered the question. I have a file folder full of fashion photos, not necessarily knit, that I have a style or flow or silhouette that inspires me. Now, if I can figure out how to turn them into designs. Well, you know what? And I'm getting ahead of myself again, but there's no reason to wait. So I was going to talk about this too. What, you know, just start something, start anything, Judy, right? Like, because I know for myself, I don't know what something is going to become sometimes, but if I'm relaxed and I'm sitting with it and I'm not forcing it to become anything, that's when it becomes something. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, but thank you for sharing, sharing that. Um, okay. So let's see. I don't, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anyone. Okay, good. You guys, this is awesome. All right. So number two, you ready for number two? So this, we spoke about the spark, right? So that's the first process, but then what about the sketch? Okay. And I know that sometimes this is the tricky part for some of you because you're like, I just can't draw. I'm all about sketch. I'm all about knitting and swatching, but like sketching, mm, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know if that's something that I can do. And uh, so I want to just start by mentioning a great book first. If you want to try to, to perfect or even just start sketching, this book, it's called Figure Drawing for Fashion Design. I've had this book for a while and it's it was first introduced uh, to me by Stephanie J. Pell. And it is just, it's great because what it shows you in here are templates uh, that you can actually trace. So it kind of starts from what, you know, you learn in, you know, sort of like, uh, I remember my days of being an art student, 
you know, being, being in class. So like sort of drawing 101 that shows you sort of like this very elementary approach, right? But you don't even have to start there. You can just jump right to some of the, like, so, you know, how to draw faces and things like that. And that's cool. That's very, very cool. But for the purposes of, of what we're going to be doing as knitwear designers, aspiring knitwear designers, and relaying our vision, because you need to somehow illustrate your vision, right? So maybe you're one, you're someone that wants to just make the finished design from start to finish, photograph it, and then, you know, send, send it to a magazine, which people do. But to save yourself time, if you can create a proposal and actually draw your vision, swatch the pertinent parts of the design, and explain your story, that will be all you need to do. And then you can be busy doing other things. So you can send that to a, a like I said, magazine, I've said this many times, but to people like myself, you know, to editors, to yarn companies, uh, to, um, you know, there's so many different options out there, to other uh, designers, other um, types of, there's all kinds of things going on, and I'm just trying to think, online as uh, with fiber-based businesses and opportunities to collaborate. But anyway, so this is a page out of the book, Figure Drawing for Fashion Design. If you want to Google it, check it out. If you got my newsletter uh, this morning, it's there's a link in that newsletter if you want to go get go grab it. And so you can see that you know there's it's kind of leading you to the skeleton of the shape of the body into how you would actually start drawing on top of it, right? So you could use the shape to dictate what it is that you're going to draw on top of that body. So that's what this book you know, really uh, shows you. And let's say you, you want to try this out. Well, you know, all you need to do is get a, and then there's different, different poses. Like, so for example, you know, you can grab a different pose and then draw your design over top, over top of it. And you can use tracing paper. So there's a method. And I learned this way back when in my art school days, when I was an illustration student, because I was actually, I actually have a degree in illustration. And I worked for a handful of years as an, a technical illustrator. And I specialized in technique drawings, hand, you know, holding needles, knitting, crochet, that sort of thing. Um, but a cool technique that, um, that I, and this is not just, has nothing to do with, um, you know, draw as I should say, um, taking the tra you take tracing paper. My gosh. Okay. Back up Kara. <laughs> That's what you get for live video. Okay. Tracing paper. You can take the tracing paper and just put it over top, right? And then you turn the tracing paper over and then you trace, if this makes sense, you, you turn it over and then you trace over the, um, because you'll be able to see what you drew trace over that and then it, it will transfer itself to the paper, to the page, to a new page. And so how I used to use it in art school, I used to draw my own prints and patterns. And this was back before the digital, digital age. This is what I was trying to say a moment ago. And then I would have a repeat and then I would use that repeat to create more repeats with the tracing paper over and over and over and over and over again. But anyway, for using it as a template, not to copy, use it as a template to create, create a body shape. And then once you have the body shape, you flush out your design on top of that. So that's one way that you can go with the sketch, right? Or another thing is, you know, you could, you could use ready to wear. You could use, uh, um, examples that you see online. Uh, you can always do that and use those, uh, to, let's say you are going to send it to a magazine or a yarn company, then you can say, well, I want an arm, you know, a sleeve like this. And then you have your own swatch, you know, showing a special stitch pattern that's going to be on a side panel. And then I'm going to, so you mix and match, mix and match, never copy, mix and match, mix and match. So that's the beauty of, you know, going on Pinterest or going online where you can actually create, you can, you can create your own designs by the things that you see that influence you. And so you're not, you're not stealing ideas. You're not taking ideas ever, 
but there is there's a um, an artist uh, right he's a writer well I think he's a he's he's not a writer he's so he is an artist but I think he is he does some writing but anyway his name is Austin Cleon and I don't know if any of you guys have heard of him but his whole shtick I guess you could say is called steal like an artist and so don't let the word steal throw you but it's a it's the way he phrases it is so eloquent but it's like using the best things that you see out there and that and allow them to influence your own ideas and so we're all in this together helping each other you know and so I think that it's about seeing what's come before you and and kind of figuring out how you can put your own magic into it I think that's a good way to describe it okay so that was number two and now, um, so let me see. So now again, like I said, I'm going to engage back and forth with you guys, but I just want to see what Mary Helen says earlier about the, um, about the spark. Sometimes the spark is the pattern and other times it's the yarn that calls to me. Um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in this case, we're talking about what starts the new pattern. Like if you want to design, what sparks you to create the pattern? right? But what you're saying, Mary Helen, is also extremely true when it comes to just our yarn crafting in general. And if we want to start working on a new, on a pattern that we see, uh, I know for myself, yeah, it might be the pattern or it might be yarn. So it's very cool. Um, so now, as far as the sketching is concerned, I mean, how many of, of you, if you're going down that road, and I know Jana, uh, just because I happen to know this from co conversations together, I know that you are you are working your way up to that phase of designing and you'd like to go to the needle arts the trade show the needle arts trade show in June which I, I would love to see you there and walk a little bit together that'd be awesome but ha but when it comes to working with magazines have you created your own sketches and this is kind of for everyone but are you able to 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 draw your vision and sketch it out and if so what kinds of tools do you use that maybe have helped you to um, perfect this or if you are not a sketcher you know if you don't sketch if you don't if you're not big on that do you use ready to wear do you use the things that you find in other places and pull you know mix and match and pull pieces so i'd love for you guys to jump in there right now and let me know what you know answer that question while i take another another sip of my coffee here And also on top, and also I need a, I need some, some water because I feel like when I talk, I am just, <clears throat> sometimes I lose my voice and I just need to take a, take a breather. But I guess sometimes I think I'm live, so I got to keep talking. But, um, I remember Brian Tracy said this once, Brian Tracy, business guru, Brian Tracy. I don't know if you guys know of him, but I'm like, he's a God <laughs> in my book. And he says in one of his very old audio recordings, he says, pausing is classy. So if you're a public speaker or you want to do live videos, if anybody wants to do live videos, I have lots of pointers for you. Um, but it's the things that I learned along the way. But, you know, just pausing a little bit, pausing and taking a breath. And a drink of water. So anyone have any tips or ideas for the way that they handle the sketching process I'm just jumping back in here and taking a look um, so Jana says that she bought the book a few months ago but haven't used it yet so I know that it's going to serve you well when you start getting into this Jana um, so let's see yes all right you guys let's see um, some of the comments come in in different ways, like to kind of, they don't come in order. You, I don't know, for some reason, at least on my end. So um, I hope I say your name right. Jelaine, Jelaine, Kathleen says, I take pictures of vendors with permission. So, um, so I'm wondering, is that, I'm not sure what, what that means as far as you mean um pictures you'll use their pictures in your influence so for example if you're working on a design is that maybe what what you mean so alrighty awesome okay so I'm gonna jump into the next thing so let's see okay Judy Judy and Judy says so if I see a ready-to-wear design that I want to try to translate into knitting do knitwear design do, uh, and she says, and then Judy asks do knitwear designers ever 
um, let's see, do knitwear designers ever create a muslin or a muslin as dressmakers do to help figure out the con? Yes, the construction. Yes, designers will use a muslin. And that is something that I've done personally because my background is actually in fashion. My back fashion, cut and sew fashion, I should say. So I worked for years in the garment center. And so cut and sew, you know, the bodice, here's the shape. And here's what's so awesome about that. When you, if you understand that or if you want to use that as a good basis, because you've got your shape, let's say we're looking at a bodice, and then you understand, which we did, you guys who have taken the Stitchucation Workshop, um, you understand how to take your stitches and break them down into stitches per inch so that you can flow your stitches on your, let's say, your shape. So let's just pretend, okay, the bodice it has shaping, but it's a square, you know, the widest part of it is like a square and it's yay high and wide. But let's just say your bodice is this wide. So from here to here, you have to figure out how many stitches will fit inside of that. So if you have a muslin or you have a, even a garment that's in your closet that you don't, you love and you can measure it. You don't have to dismantle it. You measure it and add a little bit for selvage, which is if you look at a sewing book, you'll know, and some knitting patterns allow for selvage. And what is selvage? It's the little bit, um, it's about a half an inch and a half an inch on either side of a sewing pattern because when you sew it, you lose that. You lose that in the width, let's say, because it's gonna be in your seam. So you need to figure out your stitches so how they flow in that shape. And then furthermore, as you design, you know, how do you shape your armholes, right? How do you decrease and start fully fashioning to create those armholes? So what happens there? And then if you have neck shaping that's happening in here somewhere at the same time, how does that work? So it's all about how you increase, decrease, and work with your stitches. So I hope that helps answer that question for you, Judy. These are great questions, you guys. I'm really glad that I decided to engage with you guys this way because going back and forth with these is really helpful for you while you're on your you know, designing uh, journey. So Jana says, I have doodled a little bit on some shawl shapes. Awesome, because we're gonna be doing the Stitchucation shawls. I'm gonna share a little more of that at the end. I should be, fi I should be finishing up a test knit for Francoise, all right. Francoise Denois, just so you guys know, she has been on the podcast and uh, I actually mentor her. She's my mentee and we've walked the show at TNNA together. And yeah, so she's awesome and she is amazing when it comes to marketing. So you guys should check her out, Aroha Knits. I know I'm not spell saying it correctly because it's uh, Maori. Uh, Aroha Knits, A-A-R-O-H-A. K-N-I-T-S, obviously, arohanits.com, check her out. But so anyway, so Jana, um, she should be finishing up a test knit for Francoise today, and then I have an idea I really want to be working on soon. Awesome, so you are test knitting. That's great, Jana. So um, very cool. And let's see, Shirley, uh, Shirley says, um, Shirley Taylor, um, you know that it's okay if you have a drink. I'm sitting at home and I'm drinking water and coffee. Why can't you enjoy your water and your coffee? Ah, yes, of course I can. That's right. Well, I'm just saying, you know, when I'm talking, uh, and I said before, like the whole pausing is classy thing, of course I can, you know, I can take a sip of my coffee because, you know, I need to take little breathers and, but there is this little kind of you know, call it lack of confidence at moments where I think I have to constantly be talking, constantly. Anyway, that goes, that gets better with time, right? The confidence thing. Awesome. Okay, good, Judy. I'm glad that helped you guys or helped you. I've wondered. So yeah, and Janice says, I've wondered about the muslin. Yes, you can so do that. Um, you guys, if you, I should write a little note to self because maybe that's something we should talk about more um, because like how how sewing patterns influence our knitting design, right? How sewing patterns, yes, what do you think? Thumbs up, give me thumbs up. How sewing patterns influence our knitting designs. Okay, 
couple a couple of thumbs up oh there they come and, and a heart that's good love that okay so are you guys ready for the um, number three number three are you ready for it because I can't say enough about number three it's the swatch so hi Deborah what is good beginner sweater pattern hmm what is a good beginner sweater pattern? now do you mean uh, to actually knit one or design one, Deborah. I'll ask you that question and then I'll dig into this. Number three, swatch. Okay, so you guys have been following with following along. Some of you, I think many of you watching right now, have joined the journey, the Stitchucation journey. Back in January, we were together. Um, uh, Deborah, let me just kind of back up. So Deborah, what's a good beginner? Well, not knit, but I mean, to, yeah, to knit. Okay, instead of design. I got it, I got it. Um, to start with a sweater that is back and forth, you know, nothing in the round, so back and forth, no major shaping, waist shaping, darts, none of that, just a real basic A-line. Tees are really hot right now, so like, you know, like a, a, a very loose fitting kind of tee, t-shirt, t-shirt, I mean, but that kind of, that would be a great way to start, Deborah. Okay, so the swatch. So. The reason why I can't say enough about it is because, and I was alluding to this earlier, you know, because when you're swatching, you're you're going to be discovering things that you can't, you can't see. You can't see if you're just looking at a ball, right? I mean, okay, this is a really bad example, but my yarn, what is this telling me? Nothing. But then here's my swatch, which happens to be another shawl. I can't stop making shawls, you guys. You know, look at that. So by picking up your needle, needles or needle, in this case, my circular needle and this is um, based on a design that I created for any signature designs because I just love this this kind of trellis um, pattern which I've shared with you guys in the stitchucation workshop that we did back in January and so we're going to be doing stitchucation shawls very soon so I'll share more about that but the swatch you know spending time that's number three spending time with your swatch is really you know it's a really important thing because it does reveal these things that you can't see just from looking at a skein in a yarn shop. And so, the, you know, and I know that many of you say, I just don't want to swatch. I just want to jump in. But especially if you're on the design track, you know, you're on the design path. Uh, swatching becomes your lifeline, your blueprint, because you create this swatch and this is right here next to you. Here's your, you know, your sketchbook, your graph paper, your swatch and you're referring back and forth. It's always the information that you need to start plotting your design. And if your gauge is off, you're using the same needles, you're like, hey, what gives? You can check that swatch again. So it becomes your lifeline. But if you're swatching, you know, for a sweater that you want to make, like in, in your case, Deborah, um, you know, you, you really need to know, especially if you're going to substitute, how, how is that going to drape? I have no idea. Or I see the, the yarn in the ball, but then once you start knitting, you're unhappy because you don't like how it's turning out. You don't like the texture. You don't like the drape. You don't like maybe, maybe it's a variegated yarn. You're like, gee, I, I don't like the way the color changes are happening. And this can be a problem, especially when you buy your yarn online. So it's really great to be able to go to an online yarn shop that has patterns that show you what it looks like before you buy the yarn. So Deborah, if you're gonna buy online, I don't know if that's your plan, um, but try to see if there are patterns that are made up you know, in the yarn that you're gonna to pick too. Um, but anyway, so the swatch, really huge, really important. Um, you know, it's, it's just, there are things that are not so obvious that occur while you're swatching this new design. And, you know, it just shows you the path to what comes next, which now I'm going to say is the pattern, the pattern, the thing that we've all been waiting for you guys. So when you're finally ready to get to this point, it means that you're ready to put the pieces together, right? So you've, you're excited, you know, you want to create this cool, whatever, you know, Maybe it's a garment, maybe it's not. Maybe it's a simple accessory, maybe it's a cowl. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It really doesn't. It's gotta be this thing that really gives you the why. What is my why? I really wanna make this amazing, amazing thing that really speaks to me so I can actually tell a story about it. And like I've said before, and I'll say it, because it's like become my slogan, 
you know, if you're going to work with a magazine or a yarn company, don't just call it a blue sweater. What is it? What inspired that? What, what kind of, what was your vision? You need to tell the entire story because when you tell the entire story, you are going to increase your chances for getting your design chosen by the yarn company, by the, uh, by the, by the editor. And then if it's for your own design, your own collection, you know, really thinking about what speaks to you because it's your collection. So always go with that, right? So we're going to put the pieces together and now, you know, it's time to make the pattern, which at the end of the day, this is really important because this is your end product. Okay. So again, we're talking about the designing part, right? The designing path today, touching a little bit here and there, as you guys ask the questions, if you're not really interested in the designing part, but really, you know, we talk about customization too, and that gives us confidence to move forward wherever we want to go with our knitting and yarn crafting in general. But this is your end product. This is what you, you need to, to perfect because the best swatches in the world, the best sketches in the world will never help you if you don't have this right. So the different types of things that you could look into if you haven't already, and that I, I really, I highly suggest that you, okay, so let's start with the magazines. If you want to work with a magazine, you can get the guidelines for them. You can get the guidelines and then pick up a copy of the magazine. If you don't have one, buy it, go to the newsstand, go to Joanne, go to Michael, go to Barnes and Noble, um, and pick it up and study, study the style. How does the progression, you know, work? So is what comes first? Oh, okay. Um, the skill level, let's just say the, uh, the, the, then the materials list, um, there's a little bit of copy about the pattern, so on and so forth. How do they label the, do you start with the back bodice or the front? Well, it's always the back, by the way. Like what comes first in a standard pattern? So look at the patterns in the magazine that you want to create. So if you, let's just use a cardigan as an example. So as I was saying just a moment ago, so you always start with the back. We always, that's just how, how patterns start. So you start with the back body, let's say, and then you move on to the front, the sleeves, so on and so forth. So you follow that. And then what about the guidelines? Okay. So you can go to any, you know, creative knitting, Vogue knitting, interweave, you can go to their websites and you can find the guidelines. They're usually tucked away, but they're not so hard to find. And then you can get a copy of their, of their guidelines. So you'll know exactly what to do. So if you take the time to look at the guidelines, get a copy of the magazine, really follow what it is that they are expecting and also the sizing. So creative knitting, we expect about four to five sizes for a garment. So if you're not ready for garment design, start with an accessory because that could be one size, you know, I mean, you know, cause who, you don't really need to make, more than one size of a cow, it's a one size fits all. So um, also then the next step, if you haven't done this already, and I highly recommend that you bookmark this on your computer, is to go to the Craft Yarn Council website. And uh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna flip around really quick. You guys, um, so here's my, my desktop. And so you can see the yarn standards. And here I'm on a page that shows you the, uh, uh, the sizing, so women's so body standard measurements for a woman, you can see that they, they show the bust, the center back, the um, back waist length, cross back, all this stuff. This is all right here in, in, in this is just one, one page. And there are tons of resources. So if you can see on the bottom here, if you haven't been here, this is something that you should really check out because seriously, like we don't always scroll to the bottom but uh, there's a lot of good stuff uh, on this website. And then here you can see on the side, the, uh, the navigation, you can see crochet, standard abbreviations, standard symbols, um, all of this kind of stuff. And this is what a lot of the magazines look for, yarn companies. Um, and so those are important things. And I know, uh, you know, some magazines uh, have their own style guide, uh, style, and, and, and Creative Knitting does. Um, about three-ish years ago or so, I added a sixth, hmm, I added two more skill levels to the magazine. And so um, it was advanced beginner and 
moderately challenging because I knew there was a space between intermediate and challenging that we weren't addressing. Because what happens is, it's like all about the confidence level, right? You know, feeling like, well, I'm intermediate, so I can't do this. But there are certain nuances and patterns that, you know, for, for example, a pattern made in the round will always fall into intermediate. But uh, advanced beginners, I think it's intermediate, moderately challenging. I'm trying to think if there was another level. But anyway, at any rate, you could you could make a hat that's really really easy that's made in the round and that's if it's if it's only going to be in an intermediate slot that could scare someone off because it's just something that you could have you probably could approach if you have if you're not swayed by that so anyway that's the reason why i created those skill levels increased the skill levels broadened it opened it up to create confidence so um yeah so that was um where were we uh we were at the pattern of course we're like kind of at the finale um so uh let's see we've we've talked about the um oh the software um so there are lots of different software programs out there um because i've been focused on the edit editor editorial side of my life for so long um, i've lost track with with many of these but i'll just name maybe some of these are still out there there was there's a program called sweaters I think it's probably still out there. Cochineal has a has software, which I'm pretty sure is still out there. And if any of you guys, like right now while I'm talking, Jana, Judy, anyone, um, if you guys know of any great knitting software programs, software programs, you know, just kind of share that in the comments um, because these are great and they'll help you. But I personally believe that you should really try to um, hone these strengths, read and, and all, using all of the things that I've been talking about to hone your 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 knowledge and your skill base before you use these programs because if there's a problem with your pattern later you get questions and you will you will get questions that you can answer them intelligently you know or with with a confident knowledge because if you're relying and this is a really important one if you're relying on a program to do your sizing for example and you don't understand how you arrive at that sizing, and if there's a question and a tech editor from a magazine comes back to you and asks you to fix it, you won't know. So that's just a little tip for you guys. So um, I'm gonna just check back to see what you guys, and also, the, so the question about the software, but so what kind of tools have you guys used to write patterns if you guys have already started doing that yourself? So please jump in and, uh, and definitely chime in here below. Elisa, nice to see you. Yeah, Elisa, yep, better late than never, no problem, but jump back in and watch this because um, we talked about a lot of cool stuff in here today, a lot of empowering advice. Um, let's see, Jana, Zolda recently released a spreadsheet with women's measurements as well. Oh, that's cool. So does she have that um, on her Ravel, in her Ravelry group or where, where can someone get that, Jana? Um, and so, well, Judy says, I saw that. <laughs> so I guess maybe Judy is, let's see. Oh yeah. So she goes to the yarn council standards. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much where they all come from, I think, but it adds a ton of intermediate measurements that are really useful. Yeah. So I think it's just the way you spin it. And she's, that's cool because you know what, we can pay forward all of this advice, this information to our audience, which is kind of what I'm doing now and sharing that resource with you. Um, so let's see. Um, Jana says stitch mastery is supposed to be good for charting. Okay, well that's charting. So that that's a whole other conversation and charting is definitely an important thing when you're gonna get to that point. But if we're just starting the, going down that road for actually the schematic, right? Take the sweater shape, how do you plug in your pattern? Um, those are the kind of programs I think are great to start with and then to have something that has both. I know Cochineal and maybe Stitch, well, Stitch Mastery, I've heard of that as well, but I just couldn't think of it, Dana. Um, so that would be like a separate pattern, uh, a separate program, but there are pa there are programs I know that do both. They do the charting and they help you figure out the, the shape and, this, and how to flow your stitch, your stitches. Okay. So, um, it's, so, uh, Jana says that the, um, the, the sizing info is on Isolde's blog. Well, that's really cool to know. All right, you guys. So we just talked about that number four and 
I think we're getting to the end. I just wanted to also share before we wrap up is, yeah, my little call to action, you guys, is to go listen to episode 56 because Megan Jones, that episode was released last week. That was what inspired this conversation because Melanie, who couldn't join us today, but Melanie, I sure hope that you're watching the replay. Um, Melanie inspired this because she listened to both my conversation with Megan, where I said, you know, exactly what we're talking about today. How do you go from that, that spark, sketch, swatch, so on and so forth, to finally getting to that pattern? And that's what we talk about. And as I've said before, Megan is, you know, she's just amazing. She's, she does all these things beautifully. And uh, when I first received a proposal from Megan, I knew exactly what she was talking about. So you guys can do any of this, you know, just uh, believing that you can. You know, I, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning uh, and I'll touch on it again here um, because some of you might be thinking, I just, I don't have the skills. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I have to perfect this. I have to do that. Well, I think you're ready. I think you're ready if you have the excitement. And the, the, the biggest, most important thing that drives anything in our life business, knitting, whatever, it doesn't matter. It is faith that you can do it, belief that you can do it. And when you have that, nothing will stop you. Nothing, no skill level, no lack of knowledge. You will be able to do it. So that's my message to you is just jump in, feel a little uncomfortable. Don't let limitation be your life, you know, cause you guys are ready. We're talking about all this stuff. So go listen to Megan because she's gonna excite you. She's got so much confidence. She's a ball of energy. And we also talk about what, it's, what, what it was like when she was walking on the, on, the, um, on the TNNA floor, the National Needle Arts Association trade show back in January. She was there by herself. She just, she had, I think she had a buddy too, a friend, but she just knew that she had to just get in there and start having conversations. So it's about having those conversations. So check it out, episode 56, and if you go to powerpearlspodcast.com, you'll see it's like the, the first, it's right at the top, or you can just type in 056 or Megan, you'll find it. Um, and you guys, if you haven't already done so, get my free guide. It's an eight-step guide that if you follow these eight steps, your proposal, hands down, will rock the editor's world. Not just an editor, but a yarn company. And if you use these, for your own indie collection, same thing. You're gonna be a pro, you're gonna be a pro. So if you go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash killer design, you'll get it, you can get it, okay? So it's totally free. And then finally, last but not least is, you know, check me out on Patreon. You know, I'm on there, I'm, I'm, I'm adding a lot of value to the podcast. You can get extended episodes um, where I press the button. From the moment I press record, and you can hear that. So that's at one of the, uh, that's a reward at one of the sponsorship levels, the membership levels. I'm starting to call it my community because that's what it's turning into. It's such an awesome place. Um, and you guys that are watching, many of you are already part of that community. And it, it's just, it's so amazing. And I never, you know, I can never really say with words how grateful I am to you guys because just the fact that you guys are supporting this, you're supporting the podcast, it lets me do this. It lets me sit here for, you know, my gosh, almost an hour <laughs> talking with you guys and sharing all this advice and also the other types of content that I'm able to share with you in the community on Patreon. So if you guys listening, if you're just finding me and you're not sure what this is all about, you can go to patreon.com forward slash power pearls podcast, and you can find out how to sponsor the show. And Honestly, it can be as little as a dollar, but there are so many different levels and we're going to be doing a new workshop. So I promised that I would just talk a little bit about that here. Um, I don't have all the details in place because I was going, you, you guys, you probably think I'm nuts because if you're in my face, private Facebook group, if you're a patron, I had put up a banner that said, Stitchucation Shawls, April. Then it said, March. <laughs> then it said April because I have a lot of details to work out. I really want to make it great. So the actual 
I think at this point we're talking April that it will start, right? It's going to kick off the actual workshop, but I'm going to have a free challenge this time, you guys. So you can sign up for the challenge before. So it's going to be open to everybody. And then we get into the nitty gritty for the paid, you know, the paid, paid workshop, part of the community workshop. And so, you know, we'll be doing straws. Here's a little baby. Isn't it cute? So yeah, that's it. So check it out patreon.com forward slash power pearls and I always forget to say share so please share this video um, I know it's on the tail end if you guys could do it now I would be so grateful and they can watch the replay so anyway so you guys it's been awesome and I'll see you on the podcast I'll see you in patreon I'll see you back here next week and have a great weekend See ya.